Now, if we want to estimate parameters in a in our peak of Hugo model using the Kalman filter, what we get is that we get the prediction in the mean and the covariance of the predictions. And then what we can do in the Kalman filter, as we just showed, is that we can handle missing observations. And given that we can write the AMA model as a state space model, then we can, est we can filter it with a Kalman filter. So that means that when we have mean and variance structure up here, if we assume that the predictions here are normally distributed, then we can do a maximum likelihood estimate of parameters in an AMA P, Q model. Just to recap, we have how to write an AMA P, Q model on a state space form. We have a col columns of phi's and thetas here as parameters, and then we also have to estimate the noise, or the sigma, for the epsilon there. All the others are fixed to zeros so once accordingly. Now, that's what we have here again. We have to, in general, estimate both variance for the system noise and the observation noise. And then we have the AC and Q uh, matrices that we have to estimate. But we will typically, as if we restrict ourselves to a pure AMA model, we'll restrict sigma 2 to be zeros. So how does it work? Well, what we said before is that we're going to assume a normal distribution. We, in order to do the maximum likelihood, well, then we have to look at the joint density of all the observations given a set of parameters. Now, what we do is that we pick a set of parameters, and then we go through the filter, and then by we can calculate the likelihood, and it goes as follows when we look at the process from the filter, it's a Markov process, that means all information is contained in the current state in order to predict the future, which means that we can take, as we've done previously as well, and factor out the joint entity to the product of all the one-step prediction errors, as we have here, the densities of those. So what we'll do is we'll find the conditional densities using the Kalman filter, and then we we'll have all these predictions, uh, estimates at time t, and then we'll do the update. And when everything is normal, basically we're down to things being fairly straightforward. We have, as we did for estimating parameters in the AMA model, we just have a product of univariate uh, normal distributions to look at, because that's what is happening for each of these ones the prediction errors the distribution for that is just a normal matrix. Now, what happens now, getting back to when things are, observations are available versus not available, we have the common gain, we can always calculate this. Now, if the observation yt is available, we calculate it, and then we do the update of the reconstruction as we did before, and then same thing for the reconstruction of the sigma xx, so the covariance matrix for the system noise, a uh, system state. But as we discussed earlier on, if the observation is missing, basically what we do is that we skip this up here, and we say that, well, effectively the common gain becomes zero, and that means that the reconstruction of the state becomes just the previous estimate of the state, and the variance does not reduce as it normally would when we got an observation, because we did not get uh, any information. And that's the way we run to the filter in the example I just showed you before. So what we have is that we have prediction errors, and we have the corresponding covariance matrices, and then we have the likelihood as it kind of been leading up to. We have the likelihood is the product of all those uh, normal distributions that we have here from time one to n star. There may be a lead-in phase, but let's look at that. Uh, no, sorry, uh, there's no lead-in phase in this case because we condition on the initial state, or we can also estimate the initial state. In practice, you don't do the likelihood, but you do the log likelihood, where the product becomes a sum, and that's m mainly for numerical reasons, but it's also nice to do sums. So, and the variance here, well, we can look at the second-order derivatives of 
the likelihood in order to look at that. Now, we also showed you in the example just before how to initialize this filter. Now, if you, you can basically pick any value as your starting point, as long as the uncertainty is sufficiently high. So alpha should just be sufficiently large. Or you can say that you fix the initial state somewhere that is appropriate and say you know exactly what it is, there's no uncertainty. In some cases, one makes sense, in some cases the other. In general, I do recommend that you do a combination of the two. Pick a reasonable value and a correspondingly reasonable uncertainty associated with that. Often, if you don't have any information about the covariance of things, just use uh, scale a diagonal matrix, only put things on the, uh, on the diagonal. But it's important that the uncertainty on the initial state estimate is reflected in the estimate of covariance there. Now, let's just go back to the example from before and show you how does that work out if we try to do the likelihood estimation. Basically, we want to figure out which of the runs from before are actually performing better. So the likelihood, what are we looking at? We're looking at, we're not predicting the first observation, and then we're looking at the predictions, and we square the prediction errors, and we normalize all these with the prediction variance. Get, make sure you get the right indexes. So then you have a vector with the standardized prediction errors here. And then what you do next is that you calculate the likelihood as was shown down here. The log likelihood is minus 0.5 times the sum that we have of log of the determinant and then the inner products of the variances there. So that's what we have. Minus 0.5 is the sum of all these here. And that's what we have. So this is the squared epsilon up here. It's not, that, that not the errors, but it's the sum of squared epsilon that we have up here, corresponding to the sum that we get from this part out here. So that was for the initial model. Now let's do it for the second model again. And that was where we started off with a wrong initial guess but we assume that we knew exactly where we were, and we see that the likelihood is much worse here. And we want to maximize likelihood. Now look at the third case. Here we played around. We still have the wrong initial guess, but what we did was to increase the initial variance to get close, um, I mean, increase the initial variance to reflect the fact that we did not know exactly where we were. And we see that, yes, this likelihood is less than what we have up here, but the big difference is not huge. It's still significant and such, it's not that, but just to sh illustrate that it's important to pick something that is meaningful so you fairly fast get close to the true value. Now, the next thing is we want to maximize, we want to do the estimation. So what we'll do is to take the code from before, do the common filter, calculate the sum of squared standardized uh, residuals and return the likelihood. So evaluate this function and then in this case I will just start the optimizer as at a height of 9000 meters and then the velocity is something that doesn't make too much sense. I'll do a log transform. Oh sorry, not the velocity. What I have as parameters up here is the initial, what is the initial variance? So assume that we know the height is, there's no velocity initially. We estimate up here what is the initial height. That's the first parameter. And the second parameter is what is the uncertainty on the height. Let's run this and then look at the exponential of what we got out. So we get 10,036 meters and we get a fairly small uncertainty for that model. 
Now, if you do the same thing without the logarithm, I just did the logarithm, but let's just do the same. <coughs> Everything here is the same, except that the parameters in here don't have the exponential part. Now, if I run the same optimization, I get an error. So why do I get an error? What is, the, what is the error? I need to have finite values of the objective function. So what happens here is when I don't do anything to it, it will try negative values for the uh, covariance here. And you cannot have a negative element in diagonal of a variance matrix. We could do fix that by setting a lower bound of zero. Now what happens if we look at the optimal parameter values that we get out, we get pretty much the same height, but we get a variance of zero, exactly zero. So this is due to the fact that the parameters differ by orders of magnitude, and then we'll just get very, very close. It's not sensitive enough to actually pick a value that is different from zero. We can also add a third parameter to estimate what is the gravity up here in the model. And we just start with 9 as a reference point. So what we get here is an estimate of 9.5, and the others are pretty much the same as before. So what is the uncertainty of all our estimates? That's the next part. So what we said is we can use the second order derivative or numerical approximation of the Hessian. There's a package called num deriv for numerical derivatives. Let's first look at the objective value and normalize it to get an estimate of sigma hat squared. And then the variance here is then the 2 times the sigma hat and then the inverse Hessian of the objective function in the place where we did the optimization. And now if we look at what is on the standard deviation of the two estimated parameters, it's quite large for the second state, but it's small for the height. So the height is well defined, whereas the initial variance is ill defined. And if we do an estimate of the prediction interval for what this could be for the true parameter, and then we do, in this case, I've done just used the normal approximation for 1.96. Um, transform back to the original domain to get by the exponential, then we s see that the estimate of the height has a not too wide interval, about 150 meters-ish, whereas the estimate of the variance could be 95% sure that you're it's between 0 and infinity. Well, that is probably even more likely than 99 95% uh, but that's how things are. If we look at the second one where we did not do the log transform but just did the on, on the ordinal scale and do the same thing there, then we get some estimate of the uncertainty. And if we look at the original scale here, which we always been at, we see that the estimate for the height is pretty much, or we can almost see it, So we have the height estimate up here. It's vertically the same. And the interval down here, 9,863 meters and 9,864 or 5 meters. So the width of the prediction interval is pretty much the same for the height. That's the one that we have much information about. But look at the pr estimate the confidence in our prediction interval, confidence interval for the look at the confidence interval for the variance. The estimate was zero, and now assuming that it's symmetric, we get an interval that contains negative numbers. So that's not likely to be true. Now, we can do the same thing with missing parameters. Let's just do that quickly. Pretty much everything here is the same. We just have to, to deal with the not a numbers that are observed. So we just have to remove the number numbers when we do the sum down here. So let's do it on the log scale that we find is the more appropriate one. It converts quickly. 
and we get some estimates. Let's estimate sigma, the variance, and standard deviation, and do the confidence interval, and let's transform it back to what it was before. So now we have it on the same scale as what we had before. And what we compare, ah, we cannot see it at the same time. But the initial estimate here is having a slightly wider prediction interval, but and the variance here is pretty much the same. If we scroll back a little, we have it up here. So things are pretty much the same. Of course, a little bit more uncertain because we did not use as many observations. So that was how to deal with maximum likelihood estimation, both with and without uh, missing observations.